guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Vintage Tips and Tricks video. Some of you may know what today's topic is going to be about because you voted for it on Instagram. So if anyone else wants to be involved in voting for what videos I put on my YouTube channel, make sure you follow me on IG and check out my posts, which is where I tend to ask people what they want to see. The topic of today's video is going to be five current fashions that are actually vintage. That is to say that there are certain items in fashion currently on the high street that you can get very readily that are actually things that people wore in, I'm going to stick to the 40s and 50s. Some of the things came into fashion way earlier than that, but the point is that we all love dress in vintage and actually a lot of what was fashionable in the areas that we love to dress from are in fashion at the moment and readily available so you might as well be taking advantage of that so I thought I'd share it with you. I am going to have a little disclaimer here and that is because I've done some research into some little facts that I thought you guys might like into the history of these pieces. I am not a fashion historian so there is always the chance that I have made a mistake and if you are someone that knows more about fashion history than me please feel free to let me and other people know in the comments I just ask that you do it politely. Um, I'm more than open to learning things. I just can't really abide people being rude to me and it's been happening a lot lately so just like please be kind. Okay first up there is a big trend at the moment for these like velvet style chokers with the little dangly brooches on them or like pearls and things. They are really really popular and they've been kind of touted as like harking back to the 90s but in reality this style has been really really popular for a very very long time. It is actually a style that harks right back to the 1800s to the princess of Wales aka Alexandra of Denmark who actually had a scar on her neck and would wear uh, choker styles a lot of them made out of velvet as well as pearls and other things that disguised her scar but she was considered like the height of fashion at the time she was a really really popular monarch and people started emulating her including emulating she had a limp and like women would start to like walk like her as well like she's a really interesting historical figure but from the research that I did it seems like she's one of the first people to kind of bring about that style if you look at paintings by Monet you see a lot of the women in his pictures are sporting this same kind of necklace style so obviously it had a really big impact at the time and it seems like it's a style that lasted for like 50 years after that so she really really had an impact but this style came back again in the 1950s in particular there's a lot of pictures of Ava Gardner and Bridget Bardot who really loved rocking this style it's not just like one outfit there's like a ton of outfits that they both wear some of them I will share above so you guys can see this is a style that I haven't personally rocked but I noticed it recently and I remembered seeing some pictures of both Ava Gardner and Bridget Bardot wearing these and I think I'm going to try this out because I actually think it looks incredibly cool like a pair of pedal pushes and a little off the shoulder top with a choker. I really like that. The second item of clothing that is incredibly popular at the moment and is literally all over the high street and has been for a little while now is capri pants. Now capri pants were originally designed I believe in 1948 but they became kind of the height of fashion in Italy in the Isle of Capri hence the name during the 50s and 60s and I think some of the most famous capri wearers are probably Audrey Hepburn and Bridget Bardot there was like a billion pictures on the internet of them wearing them and of course famously the picture of Audrey Hepburn in black capris black ballet flats and a black top everyone knows this picture it's like one of the most iconic pictures of her so capris have been around for a really long time and you can get them in all patterns and styles at the moment. Capris and pedal pusher styles and like cropped pants are really really in right now and there's something that you can pair really easily with other vintage influenced or true vintage 50s pieces and make a look like a vintage outfit very very easily. The third thing I noticed that is really popular right now is peasant tops. Again this is something that's been in fashion for several seasons now but peasant tops are still very much in vogue and this is something that has been around for an incredibly long time. I mean, the peasant top originally came about, again, from my understanding and my research, from the 18th century when Marie Antoinette was painted in a picture, not wearing the outer garments of her clothing, just wearing her undergarments, which it was like a dress, this kind of like a slip, like their version of a slip, which is like a peasant top. It's like a full petticoat and top and everything but it was what was worn underneath the clothing to help give shape to the outfit and she was painted wearing nothing but that which was very risque at the time for a woman of her stature but the peasant women of the time often wore this because it was much easier to do work on a daily basis if you didn't have all the restrictive outer layers of your clothing on and you just wore the the frilly kind of um, top part of your dress. Then in the 1900s this became kind of a standard style with the rise of what was called the tea dress. A lot of women would wear these like casual kind of almost like nightdress styles, what was considered a nightdress style back then, at home to like entertain girlfriends and things that they had 
familiar guests over, they would wear these like casual tea dresses until eventually it became kind of a fashion that people wore out of the house as well in a more stylized way. But yeah, things got for that era, very casual. And then it's just carried on from there. Like the peasant style kind of got a revival again in the late forties, fifties, and then the sixties with people like Jane Russell and that famous picture of her bosom that the gentlemen who upheld the Hayes Code were like in an uproar about. And then of course, again, people like Ava Gardner and Rita Hayworth and Bridget Bardot sported these tops in many a film and also just in like photo shoots and out and about, they were seen wearing this kind of thing all the time. It is a really common piece that you can find from reproduction companies, but you can also find these kinds of things on ASOS and H&M and all of the high street stores because the peasant blouse is definitely in at the moment so if you're new to vintage style and you're wanting to kind of delve into it without wearing something that is too unfamiliar to the people around you you could definitely sport a peasant top and a pair of capris and look very current with a vintage vibe you know it's a way to kind of slide the vintage style one in there the next one is one of my favorites and i'm already i'm kind of like already sporting those at the moment the high-waisted pleated short style that is in so many places at the moment. Someone told me that M&S has them right now and I know that H&M and Next and a bunch of other places have got a lot of these styles as well. But it is the pleated high-waisted shorts that kind of look like a tennis skirt. These were super popular in the late 40s and into the early 50s. In the 40s they were more of like a beach style. They were worn by younger girls and by of course Hollywood stars like Rita Hayworth and Betty Grable who just like to kind of push the boundaries of what was acceptable to wear. They were like the pinups of the era so they had the more risque outfits on but yes you can find many pictures of 1940s girls and Hollywood movie stars sporting these kinds of shorts and they are readily available at the moment at very affordable prices and I have a pair that's actually from the House of Foxy so again they are reproduction and they're very good quality but they're quite easy to find in a lot of stores right now. I particularly like to pair mine with like the blousy tie up style 40 shirt, like the ones that Rita Hayworth is wearing. I think even Betty Grable, I've got a picture here of Betty Grable wearing it as well. It was like a very common way to wear that outfit. Or I like to put it on with like a Breton striped top. Oh yeah. And lucky last is the high-waisted belt. These have been around for a long time, but not as much in fashion as they are right now. Like, they are really, really in at the moment. I think because that, like, 80s look is back in, but this isn't an 80s revival thing. This was so popular, particularly during the 50s, but this style of high-waisted belt, even, like, the snake belts and the chain belts, goes right back to the 1920s and 30s. Of course, adornments like this were popular before then, but I'm talking about it being like really fashionable uh, for a long period of time. So they came in in like the late 20s, early 30s, and then they became a really popular staple in a woman's wardrobe during the 50s because women wanted to get that wasp waist kind of look. So you can see there's a ton of belts available right now that are very, very close to the style of belts that women used to wear in the late 40s and early 50s to get that real wasp waist shape. They're like thick, wide, belts with the big buckles, chain details, like dangly chain details and stuff. They were really, really in. And it's something that when I first got into vintage style, I never would have imagined that this is what women wore in that era, but it's actually really authentic and quite an easy way to jazz up some simple clothing and make it look very authentic. And obviously a belt doesn't set you back a lot. And the true vintage belts from this era are real collector's items. They could be very, very pricey. So to be able to go and get them really readily from other stores is a really, really cheap option option for that. The one thing I will say about when you're shopping, and I always like to promote this on my channel, is yes, a lot of these items are available from very cheap stores, but I always encourage people to try and shop ethically. So try and shop local if you can. Try and shop from stores that pay their work as well and have like ethics really clearly written out on their website explaining where they get their stuff manufactured and where they get their materials from just so that you know you're putting your money to a good place and you can still get affordable stuff that is ethical um, I get that not everyone has the budget to buy super expensive stuff but I mean this stuff has gone through the fashion cycles so many times that you can also get a lot of this from the op shop in all honesty because the 80s and 90s are having a revival right now and op shops are full of that stuff so Go and have a look. You can also do workarounds. Like I have a lot of belts that were too big for me and I've just added extra holes to them with a kitchen knife. I'm a classy gal, but it works guys. Like no one knows the buckle covers it. So, you know, get the scissors and the knife out and like get crafting with some pieces that you find from the op shop. 
So guys, I hope that was helpful. Another little short tips and tricks video for you. If you like these short and sweet kind of like ideas for fashion and beauty, let me know. I will make more videos like this. Feel free to suggest videos like this in the comments below. I like making them. They're quite quick and easy for me to make. And I also learn a lot in the process because I have to do research to make these videos. So I quite enjoy that. Don't forget to come and follow me on Instagram. Come and join us in the Vintage Tips and Tricks Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Make sure you answer the questions so that we know that you're not a troll or a bot. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're new to the channel and you want to stick around, don't forget to click that little subscribe button and the notification bell so you know all my videos come out. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!